It is often said that the role of a prophet is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Well, over the course of the book of Isaiah, we see Isaiah going through the full range of these emotions. Early on, he is critiquing, challenging God's people, the Israelites, for they have strayed from God, from their covenant, their relationship with God. They have become arrogant, self-confident, and have forgotten who they really are. In today's first reading, we find a very diff different message from Isaiah. It is a consoling message. It's the message that God wants to give to his people in this time. For unlike before, they are no longer in their promised land. They no longer have the temple, the ark, that promise that God has given them. They find themselves in a land of exile in Babylonia, now dispersed, just a small fragment left on the brink of extinction. In Isaiah's message, the message from God is a consoling message. In talking about this promised land, this future, the kingdom of God, where there will be a time when we weep no more, when we will enjoy the fullness of God's banquet and all of the riches that he wants to give us in his loving presence. For us to remain faithful during difficult times, knowing what is to come in God's promise. All of the prophets, again, have their message for God's people in their time. We find them sometimes challenging, sometimes consoling, each one tailored for that moment in history. Now, we can often think of the prophets as these solo lone rangers running around by themselves doing powerful things. Uh, the reality of history is that most of the Jewish prophets were acting within prophetic schools. So groups of people uh, organized around a leader who were giving a consistent message and acting in consistent prophetic ways. And so here we have now Jesus continuing the Jewish prophetic tradition, following where John the Baptist left off, and again, drawing in disciples, giving them his message, this good news to share, and also encouraging them, in fact, inviting them to act as he acts in this healing ministry to those that they encounter. Well, one time, years back, I was thinking to myself, okay, responding to Jesus' call, looking around with compassion at God's people, that are lost, confused, leaderless, like sheep without a shepherd, and hearing Jesus' voice calling us, calling me, calling you, that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. How will I, how will we respond to that? And I thought about, well, during Jesus' time, wait a sec, because like right now, I think of Christian missionaries going off and preaching this good news about Jesus' resurrection. And something in our own way we talk about, that being this, this kingdom we're invited into. But during Jesus' life, what was the message he was sending them off with to bring to others? It wasn't the resurrection, his death. What was Jesus' message? Well, his consistent message and project was the kingdom of heaven. This kingdom of heaven that's promised to us and is being realized each day whenever we are in God's presence. And here we have Jesus, God's presence among us. And Jesus sending off his disciples to talk about the kingdom of heaven and that others may know this to see those signs, signs of healing that the blind are seeing, the lame are walking, everyone is being restored to wholeness as God desires, as God has created us to be. And we know that all we have is a gift. We have been given so much freely from God, and for us now to 
extend that generously, freely to others. May we remember our missionary call as Christians, focusing always on Jesus' message of compassion, of love, challenging at times, consoling at times, but always building up the kingdom of God.